next time on Ding Dong Games. After playing through ROM hacks of the main game, it's time for a whole new challenge. Pokemon Light Platinum, set in a whole new world, with new plot, characters and challenges to come. I'll be nuzzocking through uncharted and dangerous territory, with two new regions to explore. Will I survive this challenge? Find out in the next episode. I'll just start the Nuzlocke straight away, but I'll explain what this game is. Pokemon Light Platinum is a fan made ROM hack, set in a brand new region, called the Zeri region. It does use Ruby's engine, so it's a little bit similar to that. The game has a new plot revolving around Arceus, where the evil team manipulates the other legendary Pokemon to try and catch it. The notable thing about this game is that there are two full regions to explore, one main game and one post game, along with Pokemon from the first five generations giving you a lot of content to explore. Though the game still uses Gen 3 mechanics, so no physical special split or reusable TMs, which is unfortunate. This game does have a good reputation for having a lot of content. Though the plot really is nothing special compared to the mainline games, there is a lot of polish in the game. The game world looks really nice. However, similar to Liquid Crystal, though the game has many great qualities in its design, it does have a few issues. Most of the issues were small, but there was one huge problem that severely affected my enjoyment of this game, which I will go into great detail in a bit. Overall, this game is a mixed bag for me. It's very good for a casual playthrough, and it's impressive due to its large scale and good graphics. But anyways, back to the Nuzlocke. God, did you see that first trainer battle there? It was so close. Leech Seed and Bulbasaur came in clutch and I barely survived that. Basically, I chose Bulbasaur precisely for that reason, as it's bulky and can do a lot of defensive stall shenanigans. After all, Nuzlocke's are all about staying alive and safely taking hits. To make things better, Bulbasaur has a defensive nature which is very nice. I did lose my Wurmple already, but to be honest that doesn't even matter. Now I'm slightly higher level, the game's a little more manageable now, as I reach the next city. This is where things get interesting. First of all, I get a bunch of gift Pokemon. I get given a Growlithe from an NPC, then I get given a Johto starter from Professor Oak, then later on as I backtrack to the starting town, I find an Elkid which is given to me for free. Yeah, this game does not hold back on gift Pokemon. You get showered by them throughout the game, mostly very powerful ones. Since this was my first run, I decided to allow static gift Pokemon though this is up to you. For me it's a blind run so I thought why not. But then after that, I find a safari zone in the first city and found out that there are four separate safari zones within that place. It's so cool how there are distinct areas with very specific species in them. So I go there and I catch four Pokemon, one from each area. Then, after all of that, I catch a Pidoff in the next route. I have this plot event where I meet Trainer Gold. Yes, Trainer Gold, the guy from Johto and I get to catch a Feebas at this event, which is insane, I've already caught one of the better Pokemon of the game. What's even better is that in this ROM hack, it evolves by a Waterstone, which I already have, meaning that I can get a Melotic already. But it won't have any moves for quite a while, so I don't use it anyways. This was crazy. I just started this game and I've already got a huge selection of varied, viable Pokemon to use. But now I've got to assemble my starting team. When I have multiple starters, I usually only choose to run one in my party at a time, so I stick with Bulbasaur for now. Then I grind up. As I was doing this, I ran into... Diamond? Like, the playable character from Sinnoh? Is that even his proper name? I thought it was Lucas. Anyways, I beat this guy, though the trainer levels are already starting to escalate quite a bit. I need to keep up. He wasn't too hard though. Yeah, this game is known for having a steep difficulty curve early game, which is honestly the hardest part of the whole game. You do need to keep on grinding a bit before the first gym. Thankfully, my fast forward makes this grinding process doable. On the way to the next era, I got jumped by Trainer Gold, who demands I battle him. And oh man, get used to me saying this. One of the main things in this game is their rival battles. There are so many of them here. We've only scratched the surface here, but you'll see soon enough what I'm talking about. No! I had my first meaningful casualty. 
The Shanks got a crit collect with Spark and somehow one shotted me. It did use charge beforehand, but I was still surprised. Man, Needle Queen is one of my favourite Pokemon, it sucks to see it go already. But this happens. Now I've got to face the first villain boss of the game. Team Steam. Weird name. She leads off with a Drifloom, which had Shadow Tag. Oh god. This ain't it, Chief. Oh no, my Growlithe's asleep, but I somehow woke up and managed to beat this Drifloom. But now she's got a Drifloom, which also has Shadow Tag. This does not look good. However, it literally had no good attacking moves and ends up doing nothing. I do need to be wary of Shadow Tag, as that ability is so unfair in Nuzlocke's. But Ivysaur is so good at stalling, I love it. Sweet, now I get given a Hoenn starter. This won't be relevant till late game though. But wait! Just as I'm about to challenge the first gym, I get jumped by Trainer Red. Yes, Trainer Red, who, guess what? He wants to battle. This is what I'm talking about with the rival battles. There's still two more other rivals in the game to get to. But there are so many rival battles. It was cool, but the fact that they always ambush you right before you reach a new town or new area does get really obnoxious, as you have to constantly backtrack as it is. Okay, so here's the first gym leader. I was a bit anxious, so I made sure to prepare properly, just in case. However, she ends up being a complete joke. Even her ace Pokemon Vespaquen did absolutely nothing to me. That was anticlimactic. And no, this won't be the last time I'll say that. After that, I ran into the last two rivals of this game, who I just trivialised and... What? Gold has already jumped me again and wants another rematch. I just beat him not long ago. His final Pokemon was slightly challenging, but only because my whole team was already injured and he ambushed me out of nowhere at the least convenient time possible. Anyways, after that, I get some of the best Pokemon in the game actually. I get given a Miltank, which had an impish nature. This is such a good Pokemon. But then something even better happened. I found a Snorlax static encounter and caught that. Snorlax is unbelievably powerful in Nuzlocke runs. It's OP as anything, with its massive stats and good recovery moves. It's almost unstoppable at times. You best believe I'll be using this. However, it's at this point where I started to run into the game's biggest problem by far. Anyone who's seen my Liquid Crystal video knows where I'm going with this, but my enjoyment of this game was really affected by the difficulty. Or should I say, the severe lack of it. After a certain point, the game's difficulty becomes completely laughable and I'm not even exaggerating. As long as you're a similar level to your opponent, the challenge is non-existent. The real reason why is because just like the base game's AI, which has no EVs, IVs or natures, but most importantly, the AI is just awful in this game. It's terrible. It's so bad, it's actually funny. It's on the same level as in Liquid Crystal, where the champion uses growth, then pound of all moves. Yes, it's that bad. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about soon. This seriously made the game a lot less enjoyable, as the battles become so insignificant and so cheap. The only reason I got challenged later on was because I was so underwhelmed by the game that I ended up playing with half a team that was so underleveled. And yes, I did lose quite a few Pokemon to really stupid misplays in this Nuzlocke, but that's only because I was so underwhelmed by the game's difficulty that I stopped bothering to take this game seriously and just did not prepare at all. I became ridiculously underleveled later on. And just wait till I get to the final battle. That was probably the most ridiculous final battle you've seen on the whole channel. Another thing that got annoying is that the constant rival battles always jumping you out of nowhere gets really annoying. It feels cheap to get forced into battle when half of your team is injured. But for now, let's get back to this comical Nuzlocke run. So I somehow lost Growlithe here and tanked to self-destruct. You know, you know what, I don't even care. I skip straight to the next gym battle and even the gym leader's level 27 Torterra, which sounds very powerful, was absolutely pitiful as it had no physical moves to hit me with. What a joke. Well, at least this next battle against Trainer Red was actually kind of challenging, because he had a Gardos on his team, and my team was not fully evolved yet, and I wasn't even ready for it. Had that Gardos got a critical hit on me then, 
I would have been in a lot more trouble, but it didn't, so that's thankful. Now, the next notable thing that happened is this plot event, which pissed me off because once you trigger it, you cannot leave until you clear this event. Also, there are no Poke Centers or any way to heal your Pokemon, so you better have brought healing items with you. If you didn't, then you're screwed. But what happened against this Drifblim was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. It used Stockpile three times, as I was going to just stall it out with Leech Seed easily. Did I mention that Drifblim has Shadow Tag? Cause that's a very fair ability for Nuzlocke, right? Anyways, I missed two Sleep Powders in a row, as the damn Drifblim used Flipping Spit Up, one-shotting my Ivysaur. What? I, I was dumbfounded. This was so dumb. It seriously pissed me off how my best Pokemon got killed off like that, it was so cheap. It had a defensive nature, I never even knew that Spit Up dealt that much damage. Ivysaur was overpowered as all hell. But... It's fine, it's fine. I'll just have to move on now. I go straight to the third gym leader after that, and his team is actually pretty good. But, his Pokemon's mood pools are awful. His Gyarados was the only real threat. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I got given a Zorua and a Lapras which has a modest nature, and that was so overpowered in this run. Anyways, I destroy Trainer Gold again. I catch a Nidoran male, I do a slight bit of grinding, then go straight to the 4th gym leader, and I'll just let that battle speak for itself. Okay, I guess. Despite this, the next boss battle after that was actually really hard, but this was only because I was completely unprepared and underleveled. This sequence here involving Snorlax and Umbreon was by far one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in any Nuzlocke. Keep in mind that I used Mean Look to keep me from switching out. What the actual hell was that? I hit myself in confusion nine times. This pissed me off so much, but then this Drapion was wrecking my team and I accidentally sacrificed two Pokemon to it, not realising afterwards that I could have actually avoided that by using Unpheasant, but it's done now. I was so annoyed by this battle obviously, it was so dumb. Anyways, beat Trainer Red again, then Trainer Gold, and as you can see my underlevel team is just sweeping here. Honestly, I'm starting to get incredibly unimpressed by this game, which only gets more confounded the more I play it. I just can't be asked taking this game seriously and actually preparing for it because the AI is so bad. I did however make a massive misplay here in the next rival battle against trainer Diamond here, which I am still beating myself up over. I underestimated the Samurott and lost my Snorlax here, my best Pokemon, as it got hit by revenge. Oh my god. I was really, really, really not happy about this. I could have actually played around that easily, but it was like 3 o'clock in the morning and I was marathoning this game, and was almost half asleep while playing it. That doesn't excuse my misplay, but I did not want to lose my Snorlax, but goodbye Snorlax. To be honest, it was probably for the best anyways, Snorlax was probably too overpowered for this game. So now I've only got 4 Pokemon left in my team, so I'll grind here just to be safe. But it's at this point where the AI really starts to become just laughable. Seeing an Espeon from a boss battle use Swift and not like a psychic move was just beyond all reason. And oh god, this next gym battle, this was just unreal. Keep in mind this gym leader uses ground and rock types. Look at my team, they do not look well equipped for this at all. Keep in mind that my Lapras still has water gun for its water coverage, it does not have surf yet. In all honesty, I should have probably lost this battle as I did not put in enough effort. But no, the horrible AI literally gave me the win here. Um, thanks I guess. 
After that, I'll skip straight to the Six Dream Leader, which uses electric types, and now my team looks really outmatched here, right? Wrong. Typhlosion starts flexing, then get this, my team was so unprepared that I thought, screw it, I switched in Lapras on the electric type gym leader and swept- Remember Emerald Omega, where gym leaders actually required big brain strategies to beat? But for good measure, I do another grinding session, just so my whole team is now evenly leveled, before moving on. This mill tank is completely broken, almost as good as Snorlax was. Hey, Cynthia. Be gone. Some plot stuff happens regarding the Gen 5 legendaries. Eh, to be honest, the plot isn't particularly interesting. I'm just here for the battles, you know. I beat this boss fight. The Salamence used Slam on my Bronzong, then it used Flamethrower on my mill tank that had thick fat. Just let that sink in. Gold gets swept once again by Lapras, which is seriously overpowered, especially since it's got a modest nature and massive special defense. God, this was obnoxious. How Diamond literally ambushed me out of nowhere, and my team was injured. Having to backtrack gets really annoying. This battle could have gone way worse as my team was not ready at all. Thankfully, my Lapras does not get critted, and oh my god, that was too close for comfort. Typhlosion did not get so lucky, however. Goodbye, Typhlosion. Diamond can seriously piss off for that. These ambushes are just cheap. You two trainer red, just go away. I replace Typhlosion with Mudkip and go to challenge the 7th gym leader. I had to do this really dumb task to get her to come back to the gym, but in the actual gym battle itself, literally nothing of note happened. It wasn't even worth showing. Yeah, I'm not going to waste your time with these stupid battles. I'm certainly not doing the stupid bullshit that other YouTubers do while commentating like, Gyarados use Waterfall and one shots Geodude. They send out another Geodude, and I use Waterfall again, and I one-shot it also. This time they send out an Onyx, and I once again use Waterfall to one-shot it. In case you didn't know, water is super effective against rock. Also, I'm going to narrate the plot events of Fire Red, as if you haven't already played the game like a million times. What a load of rubbish. At least this plot exposition cutscene is pretty cool, not gonna lie. It's also dumb how a load of YouTubers really hype up how hard their own challenge runs are, to make it more valid, get out of here. I won't lie, a fucking monkey could beat Light Platinum. Now, this battle here was so stupid. I sacrificed an Unpheasant because I got really unlucky with hacks, which was annoying but to be honest, Unpheasant wasn't even that good. The best move that it learns is flipping Air Cutter, so yeah, it's not even that useful. I just carry on with four severely underleveled Pokemon, and now I've got another boss battle who's even stronger than the last one. I managed to pull through and beat these overleveled mons with my Gimpy team. Oh yeah, you think this is a level disadvantage here? You haven't seen anything yet, just so you wait. Now you'd think that maybe I should grind for the 8th gym leader, right? Screw that. I go straight to the last gym leader, and this battle was just comical. I decided to use my Super Cheese Bronzong setup strat by spamming Calmind. Wait wait, what was that? Why the hell did this Kingdra use Twister when it had Hydro Pump? Wait, what? Why did it use Bubble? Bubble, of all the moves Kingdra could have used, it used fucking Bubble. I'm so dumbfounded. 13 levels under and still dominating the game. This is the dumbest shit I have ever seen in my fucking life. I am being real with you right now. You'd think that this overleveled Infernape would actually use a fighting type move on my Lapras, but no. And you'd think that this Garchomp would have a better move to use instead of special attack and crunch. Anyways, I do some grinding for the Elite Four, and man the trainers here are really weak. So I continued grinding for the Elite Four, and turned out I was so bored by the grinding process that I literally gave up on it. Being severely underleveled and with only 5 trained Pokemon on my team? Screw it, if this game won't take its own difficulty seriously, then neither will I. I destroyed gold for the last time, and why the hell does he only have 2 Pokemon on his team? You'd think for the last gold battle he would actually have something better. What even happened there? Red also gets the boot one more time. 
And now I'm at the Pokemon League. The final battle awaits me. At this point, I'm not even afraid in the slightest. I'm so unimpressed that I don't bother to do any more grinding. I get my 5 Pokemon up to level 63. Did I just stop there because I can't be bothered doing any more? Oh man, here I glitched and got trapped in this maze area. So I had no choice but to use a walkthrough wall glitch to get out of this. Anyway, screw it. Let's just get this over with. I'm so underleveled that maybe this time in the Elite Four challenge, I might get a slight challenge. Here's the first Elite Four member, and that was something. Hell, not even the critical hit was enough to stop me. The second Elite Four member gets absolutely swept by Thunderbolt. Okay. The third Elite Four member actually knocked out one of my Pokemon. As I've only got 5 Pokemon on my team, I've got nothing to switch into Scrafty, which used Focus Punch. And that's literally all it uses, just spams Focus Punch. My Bronzong died, but only because it missed 2 Meteor Mashes, which was very unlikely. This Calamine Bronzong setup is absolutely overpowered as hell once it does set up, but it's gone now. I sweep the rest of the team, so it doesn't even matter. So now I've only got 4 Pokemon left in the team. The last Elite 4 member was a complete joke. At this point I'm just speechless of what happened. The Elite 4 was so disappointing and unimpressive. But there's still one more battle to do. The champion. Who is the strongest? Because I've only got 4 Pokemon left in my team, who are unbelievably underleveled, will I finally get a challenge here? Oh god, what the actual fuck was that battle? Oh my god, I got brain damage from that, I really did. This is some of the stupidest shit I've ever seen in any Pokemon game. But with that, the main game's over. I did lose another Pokemon but who cares. Now I know that while I cleared the Zeri region, the first region of the game, there was a whole new region to clear out called the Lauren region which has 8 more gym badges in a new Elite 4, then there's more post-game content after that, which sounds really good right, quite a lot to do. Well, I don't want to do that, screw that. Why should I continue with this idiotic challenge, it's so pointless now that I've beaten the main game. It's time to move on to better challenges. This Nuzlocke run is now over. Overall, while I have railed Pokemon Light Platinum a lot, and did it really badly, in all honestly, this game is not really bad. The game itself is actually really nice, with a lot of content, variety and very polished. However, the horribly unbalanced gameplay really ruined this game for me, similar to Liquid Crystal. Like it or not, nobody plays the mainline Pokemon games for the plot. The plots suck. They are RPGs that are centred around the gameplay. If the gameplay is literally broken, then that's a huge part of the game just ruined. Overall, if you want to play a game that's easy, or you want to play a new game or something more casual, then I do recommend this game. If you want a challenge, then look elsewhere. Anyways with that, the video's now over and I look forward to seeing you all again for my next challenge. It'll be much harder. This is Ding Dong, signing out.